Right. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, thank you, Suzanne. How are you? Oh, good. It's great to talk to both of you. Um, I uh, went to the La Brea, one of the La Brea Facebook groups, and uh, I asked if people had questions, and they actually came up with quite a few. I, I won't have time to ask them all for you. Uh, Josh, I'm afraid the only specific question they asked you is the one woman wanted to know if you were single or not. <laughs> <laughs> No, unfortunately, I've spoken for. Uh, okay. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and Rowan, uh, Chris wants to know if it's difficult playing a character that's stoned and doesn't have access to food. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. It is. It is absolutely <laughs> very difficult. It is very, very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Because you can't like pretend to have the munchies or anything, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretend. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you trying to tell us that you actually are stoned on the show? <laughs> I'd love to hear that. <laughs> it's safe. So, he's a very he's a very good actor. Yes, that's right. Um, well, you know, it's legal in California, so if you shoot there, I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, Fran asks, if you were really stuck in 10,000 BC, what creature comfort would you miss the most? Uh, you want to start, uh, Josh? Um, yeah, it's funny they put creature comfort. There's a lot of creatures and not a lot of comfort. <laughs> um, it, for me personally, like as Josh, I guess like, mm -hmm. eh, I don't know. Like uh, I really, really like my sleep. You know, I figure you could probably sleep in 10,000 BC, but there'd just be a lot of anxiety around doing that. You know, you're very vulnerable back then. Yeah. Um, so having having a nice having a nice safe sleep, I think would uh, would probably be the, the most creature comfort I'd, I'd miss. Yeah. Right. Ooh, for me, I think it would be something as simple as a hot shower. I think that goes such a long way in making me refreshed or feel good about myself and 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 the day. Hot water is something that's uh, probably taken for granted quite a bit, and um, yeah, we haven't really we haven't really cracked that in ten thousand BC yet. <laughs> no, and uh, that actually leads into a good question, which is uh, a lot of the fans uh, that like to complain a lot, and you know, people like to complain, uh, seem to be fixated on the fact that you guys are not showering or brushing your teeth and and stuff like that, and how are they living and all this and did you have fans asking you guys questions like this on social media or anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely hear a lot about that, huh? and 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 kind of like the perfectly manicured nails on some of the sort of women, and and um, I like to think that you know a, a kind of a salon fell through the sinkhole, <laughs> and that and that the women all kind of <laughs> and some of the men. I'm not naming any names, but Judah um, went in and, and and got a lot of the like. Um, supplies from that and have, have hoarded them and created their own little uh, little salon there because um there yeah, i noticed everyone's looking pretty good i mean we have only been there for uh i think 11 or 12 days right uh over the first season so um not a lot of time to get truly truly grubby or grow a big beard um so you know there's there's loopholes to these complaints <laughs> that's what i figure i figure off screen they're 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 washing in the stream they're to washing their yeah. clothes they they maybe some of them found some razors and the debris you know <laughs> the <Absolutely>. straight razor. <laughs> yeah okay that's good um and uh you kind of have criticisms like that on on a show like this those little yeah. small uh issues but that's in a way if the show kind of focuses on those little details too much we won't be able to play around with the stories and yeah. the and the mysteries and and look at the animals and the creatures and uh the twists and all of that if we get kind of bogged down with those kind of details exactly but, uh, there's yeah, a lot that happens off screen yeah nobody wants to see you guys brushing your teeth okay <laughs> I don't want to see that. i'd much rather see you being chased by an animal or having a relationship with a girl or whatever you know? yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> so um uh let's see jan wants to know if you have input into your characters at all or whether you ever do any improv on the show yeah, <clears throat> there's, there's, there is a bit of that. There's, it's a nice collaborative environment. Um, for myself, I know like it, Lucas is such a complex character that, and, and kind of came into the series as not necessarily an afterthought, but you know, he came in a little bit later and, and the development of his character 
wasn't set in stone. So, which gave me a lot of leeway to play around because he wasn't pivotal to the, I guess, the mythology of the show. He was kind of there to, I guess, butt heads with people and create, you know, stir the pot. So because of that, I was afforded the chance to, you know, building my relationship with the showrunner with David Applebaum, you know, mm-hmm. through emails and calls, discuss this journey and discuss, you know, maybe a few uh, things that I had, you know, thought up about the character and, and put that in there, you know, like in season one, the panic attack that he has when the thing mm-hmm. falls in on him and his mother, uh, that wasn't scripted. That was mm-hmm. something I spoke to the writers about. I was like, I think that this confined space, this would be a moment where his mother needs to look after him and maybe there's something in his past that triggers this. Um, so that was really lovely to be able to plant the seed of something and then see it yeah. on screen on a network show. Um, That's great. I know, I, know, I know Rohan has a lot of fun improvising, so I'll let him take over from me. <laughs> I mean, I definitely try to where I can. Like, no one's going to be able to take that away from me. That's one of the things I did in the audition that I thought really helped me get the job is that I was kind of encouraged to improvise. So, so when I did and it worked out and I get to set, I'm kind of trying to play with those with, with those kind of parts of myself that I kind of really like. Um, I love comedy, I love character, and I love kind of discovering things in the moment as well. And um, being able to play around with that is, is very fun. Not often does it get to make final cut in the end, but uh, getting out of my system is important. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah, no, I really like you, your guys' characters and how you uh, progressed over time from being two guys who were at, at odds each other. You were afraid of him <laughs> and he was seeing really mean. <laughs> and then you both have developed more and become friends. I, that's been great to watch. Well, thank you. It's been a lot of fun to play. Good, good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Tell me I have to wrap it up and nice to meet you and we'll see you again sometime. Likewise. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.